Devin Haney easily, and when I say easily, I mean easily dominates George Cambosis over 12 rounds. I gave George Cambosis only the first round. George Cambosis had the wrong game plan. Actually, George Cambosis, my first thoughts about him were the only real thoughts. When I said prior to the uh, Teofimo Lopez fight that this guy is a C-class fighter, he barely beat Lee Selby. A lot of people thought Lee Selby beat him. He's not world-class. He has no business being in the ring of Teofimo Lopez. And then I said I would be shocked if the fight made it past five rounds. Now, I had no idea that Teofimo Lopez, his wife cheated on him, allegedly. Uh, shit happened. I haven't heard some people saying that his kids weren't his kids. So a lot of shit happened in his life. He was complimenting suicide. And George Cambosis captured lightning in the bottle and edged out Teofimo Lopez to capture the lightweight championship of the world. Devin Haney is a very, very stable character. Devin Haney has a stable father as well, unlike Teofimo Lopez, who has a retarded father. In that way, David Haney was never going to explode like that on live television. And David Haney, the first time around, all he did was jab, 1-12-0. This time, he was looking for the knockout from the beginning. He won it 11-1. Big deal. One round difference. So in 24 rounds, you can only give George Cambosis the first round of the second fight. Even that round, a lot of people gave it to David Haney. Because they both landed 10 punches to each other, but I favor aggressiveness. George Campos was a bit more aggressive. That's it. Now, what's next for George Campos Jr.? He probably does walk away from the sport. Because if you guys did not notice, he had fired his manager and trainer prior to this fight. Very similar to what Cal Brook did prior to the Terrence Crawford fight. A final cash out. Cal Brook. Did I say Cal Brook? Yeah, Cal Brook. He did not bring Brandon Ingle with him for the Terrence Crawford fight. He didn't even use Eddie Hearn with him for the Terrence Crawford fight. He just wanted to make as much money as possible with spending as little money as possible. He had no idea Emir Khan fight was going to be on the table. He got that fight. He did bring back Brandon Engel for that fight. And he won it easily. Now, George Campos Jr. He doesn't have an Emir Khan fight on the table. He does not have that type of fight, a casual fight like that. Unless, what, does he want to move up three weight classes and fight Tim Zura, Jeff Horn in Australia for a big money fight? That would be suicide. That would be ludicrous. Tim Zhu wouldn't kill him. Devin Haney, his power is non-existent. De- Don't get me wrong. Devin Haney has proved himself to be a pound for pound level fighter. Even if not top 10. Just outside of that. Devin Haney has proved himself to be a very, very good boxer. He's he's very reminiscent of Floyd Mayweather Jr. I would pick Devin Haney to be even a Shakur Stevenson. I would pick Devin Haney to be a lot of fighters. Only two fighters right now I, I would favor over Devin Haney at lightweight. And those are two fighters are Vazil Lomachico and Gravon Davis. But I would favor them like, what, 53% to 47%. Not like, oh, this guy's like a 3 12 favorite. No, no way. Devin Haney could outbox anyone, any lightweight in this era. Any lightweight in this era. That's my thoughts about this fight. Give me your thoughts in the comment section below. I don't want to make this fight too long because Deontay Wilder just stepped in the ring. And I'm very interested to see. Deontay Wilder vs. Robert Hellenius. Like and subscribe to the video. Sadiq Boxing out.